Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech. And in this video, I wanna talk about this device that's more efficient than the top level GPU, the NVIDIA RTX 4090 on Radeon. And we're gonna switch over to the computer to show you what I'm talking about and actually look at the profits and efficiency of this particular device. This is an FPGA called the Xilinx C1100. And if you're familiar with the channel, you know what we've done with this FPGA already. The Radiant Cryptocurrency has been available to mine for quite some time on both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, and they actually do pretty good. The 4090 has this coin as the most profitable to mine, but Rabbit Mining did advise the community that this was coming down the pipeline to where Bitstreams were allowing FPGAs to mine the SHA-512 256D algorithm. And once again, the most profitable GPU to mine with right now, even though it's not as profitable as back in the day, is the 4090, making about $1.17 a day or $0.56 cents after the cost of electricity calculated at $0.10 cent per kilowatt hour. Obviously, that varies per location. But the device that I'm talking about blows the 4090 out of water, in my opinion, and is not even tuned yet. I'm still working on that, and I will have a follow-up video. But looking at the 4090 overclocks, if we put the high overclock on, we're making about $1.17, $1.18 a day, 54-ish cents after electricity because it's hitting 3.3 giga hash, but at 200 and almost 70 watts. Now, some people are going to get their GPUs more efficient than that. And then the medium overclock, I think is more like 2.98, almost 3 giga hash at 250 watts thereabouts. We can see on the efficiency chart for hashrate.no, that the most efficient GPU on this algorithm or cryptocurrency is the 4070 Ti that can do 13.24 mega hash per watt and the 4090 in second place at 12.95 mega hash per watt. And on the left hand side, again, the 4090 is leading the charge, blowing out its little sister or brother, uh, the 4080 at 2.1 giga hash. However, the C1100 FPJ, which is one of many out there, can do about three giga hash but at 154 watts and that's again stock settings i have not tuned it and i have been playing around with that so stay tuned for data in a future video about that including where i walk you through how to actually get it working on a linux based system so just bear with me that will come in a following video but looking at the data at the pool we're making about 400 and before tuning about 310 or plus radiant every 24 hours, which at the time was uh, around a dollar seven a day. So it's not as profitable as you were to if you were to mine Caspa, for example. Caspa is the, still the most profitable one to mine, but radiant gives it a good run for its money. Where Ironfish wasn't as profitable to mine with. Matter of fact, if we go to hashrate.no and click on FPJs, you would see. Caspa is still the number one most profitable coin to mine, but look at the number here. So it says 106, or excuse me, 106. I wish it was 106 dollars a day, but it's a dollar six a day. Where at the pool, it's saying with my tune right now, a dollar fifteen. At without the tune stock, about a dollar eight, dollar seven. So on point or close to Caspa's profitability for this FPJ. So this gives us a dec decent opportunity. Uh, to use our FPJs to stack an additional asset or other cryptocurrencies, averaging around 400 plus radiant a day compared to the stock 310. And I noticed something as well is the hash rate reported at the pool is obviously going to be different than what you're getting at the actual miner. So I have those numbers for you. Again, almost hitting 3.1 giga hash or 3.098 giga hash on stock settings at a 450 megahertz clock. We are doing 154 watts because we're not adjusting the, the core voltage. We're leaving it stock. That puts us at 20.11 mega hash per watt, beating out the 4070 Ti and the 4090. But at the pool level, we average, at least from my numbers, over 24 hours, 2.78 giga hash. But at the minor, we're at 3.1. And so that kind of roughly calculates to we're losing 11%. Uh, percent so to speak and i think it's a little bit more than that i'm still doing that the calculation 
But I can say that these devs that develop these bit streams are going to have a dev fee, just like anything else we've seen. We actually seen it with Team Red Miner, where they're charging a 15% fee for mining Caspa using their miner. And people are willing to pay that because that allows their FPJs to mine Caspa, a cryptocurrency that they want. And again, right now, according to the charts, the most profitable cryptocurrency to mine. But Radiant, when tuned, does really good and can beat Caspa depending on your efficiency or your clocks, voltages, and uh, power draw. So I will have an upcoming video showing you how to get your FPGA up and working, but it's going to vary because each FPGA, FPGA is different, and they've been slowly coming down the pipeline, right? So maybe like the TH55 maybe or 53 had it, and then it was the C1100, and that's on a shared family with the U50C. And then uh, the Forest Kitten 33s, and I believe Osprey is coming down the pipeline as well, as Rabid Mining talked about. So as it comes out, there's going to be some testing, and there's going to be some data needed. And the developer does want you guys to provide data or help them test out on your FPGAs. And I'll have everything linked down in the description to help you get started, some step-by-steps to at least go ahead and get started. And I will also include that in my guide that I'm gonna show you how to get the Radiant Bitstream working on your C1100 or U50C, but because I don't have all the FPGAs, I can't show you each one. So stay tuned for that, but the point of this video is to show you that this FPGA blows the 4090 out of the water, which is the most profitable GPU you can mine with right now, and is super efficient on Radiant. I'm very interested in it, and this is the type of stuff that really got me into mining in the first place. Tinkering, tuning, uh, you know, trying to get the best performance out of a particular device or piece of hardware. So we'll see how things come and I will see how the tuning metrics work. I am developing my Google Doc to where I'm having the various clocks and stuff like that put in there to see what we can do and compare like we did with Caspa and Ironfish previously. But check out the links in the description to get started. Test it out on your FPJs. If not, wait for my guide to help you at least get in the right direction and share your data with the community in the proper discourse. Now the FPGA community is a very tight knit community. If you go in there guns blazing, running your mouth, or you know, probably talking about stuff you shouldn't or don't get permission for, you will either one, not get an invite or two, get kicked. So be careful, be respectful, and be mindful that these devs are taking time out of their lives to develop a bit stream so that way your device can mine a different cryptocurrency. And that really gives an edge to FPGAs over ASICs which are special, specialized and can only mine like say SHA-256 or script. FPJs have that adaptability, sort of like GPUs. Yes, you are reliant on the bit streams and developers of those bit streams, but you get more adaptability than you would ASICs. But that's gonna do it for today's video. Please do me a favor on the way out, hit the like button, make sure to get subscribed, hit the notification bell to stay up to date, as well as check out some of the links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And you have yourself a wonderful day. Take care, I'll catch you in the next one.